Welcome back everyone to the South Carolina Gamecocks Dynasty. It's been a couple of days since I've been able to record. I got a little under the weather again, but we are back and we are taking on the Commodores today. Vanderbilt has had some success this year. They haven't been that great in the Dynasty, but sitting at four and three, they've got a couple of SEC wins under their belt now, three and two in conference play. They are not a team to take lightly. As you can see where they were able to upset Georgia and Florida. So two quality wins there, but they lost to Middle Tennessee and they lost to Missouri. So AJ Swan, 10 touchdowns, four interceptions, a good year for him, but they're going to need a lot, a lot to beat us today. As you can see right now, we sit at second in the Eastern side of things. Vanderbilt isn't last for once. I believe it's actually Kentucky is last, but we are going to kick things off here today. Thomas Mayhew is going to boot it back to the back of the end zone and the Commodores are going to get the ball first. That's going to be Betts Polly. And out comes AJ Swan and company as they look to get started early on today. This Carolina defense is not a first half unit. They struggle in the first half. So the Commodores need to get going early. Swan's going to start the day running into traffic and he's quickly wrestled down, but he's going to get a yard. I thought it might have been a sack for a second. He does get one yard now. Third and 10, though. Swan on this first drive of the day. He's going to find Smith. Patrick Smith is going to get four yards, and that's it. And now the Gamecocks come out on the field, led by Braden Davis again. He has been so good since he took the starting job. That one is an errant throw. Normally, you don't see that too much from him. That's going to set them up in a third and 10. Davis has Carroll in the backfield. It looks like it's going to be a little screenplay to LaVacia Carroll. He's going to have some space, but it's nicely cut off by the Commodores defense. And they force a quick three and out. So both teams exchange a couple of possessions. And now it's back to Vanderbilt. Still zero all. Second and four. Swan's going to take off. He gets around the edge. Cuts up back to the middle of the field. He's got 11 on the play. A.J. Swan is not necessarily a mobile guy, but he can run it when he needs to now. First and 10 for the Commodore. Swan's going to give it to Patrick Smith, pushing his way forward. He's going to get three on the play. Second and seven now for Vandy. Five minutes in this first remaining. Swan's going to want to throw. He's under pressure and taken down. Stone Blanton on the blitz, and Swan actually had protection there, but he basically runs into him. And Blanton's able to bring him down. Now third and 13 after the sack. Swan's going to take the snap. Going to want to run a screenplay. But this one is quickly swallowed up by the Gamecocks. That is a three-yard loss. Patrick Smith didn't even really stand a chance. As they now take over second and five. It's going to be on the next possession. Carroll trying to get the first down. He has, has to do a lot of fighting for just three yards there. So they have a third and two now. And got to get this offense going. Braden Davis going to fire to DJ Long on the outside. He spins into the arms of the defender. He's got 11 yards now, second and 11. Carroll's going to get it this time on the inside zone, cutting it back inside. And he's got a 12-yard run. Nice job to take the outside edge and then come back into the middle of the field when he had some space. That sets up a first and 10. Davis to the end zone, looking, and he's got his man. Touchdown. Scott Hall, 26 yards for the veteran tight end as he has made his impact. He came in a few years ago as a low three-star recruit, but now Scott Hall continues to impact this offensive unit as in ways that we never expected him to. So Scott Hall gets the Gamecocks on the board, but A.J. Swan's going to break a tackle. He's going to break another one. He's got some space, and he's quickly... Finally wrestled down after 11. That could have been a loss of three, but instead, now they're going to have a second and six. Patrick Smith runs into traffic off the counter. He couldn't get to the outside is what he was trying to do. And he's got three rushes for 12 yards. Second and four or third, turns into a third and four. Swan wants to throw, holding on to it very long, and it should have been picked off. Nick him and a warrior is going to bat it away. And instead, we're going to go into the second quarter up 7 nothing. Davis now going to start the second quarter on a 1st and 10 and a dot to DJ Long. That one goes right over the arms of the outstretched linebacker. The outstretched arms of the linebacker, I should have said. And now a 1st and 10 inside Vanderbilt territory. Braden Davis going to take it on the read option. Got some nice blocking. Can he get there? He almost had it all the way. Instead, it's still going to be 19 yards, but he is tripped up and brought down 
inside the 20. We're going to mark him about the 17-yard line now. Carroll's going to cut it back inside on the zone. That's going to be a nice five yards, making a second and long into a third and manageable third and five now. Braden Davis going to go back to Carroll on the ground. He cuts outside. He's got a touchdown. Lavacia Carroll, 12-yard run. And the Gamecocks offense is clicking here early in this one. 14 to nothing if this extra point goes through. As you can see, they actually sealed up the initial hole he was trying to go through. But a nice cut by Carroll. And he's got a touchdown there. Now Swan on first and 10. Is he fast enough to get the edge? Yes, he can. Just a six-yard gain, though. They're going to have a second and four now. Swan's under center. It's going to be a play action to Smith. Smith's going to run to the outside. And now it's Walker. He does a nice job. Devon Walker grabs it and stays in bounds and cuts up. He's got 18 now on the Vanderbilt logo. Second and six are going to go to Patrick Smith, who is stuffed. A one-yard gain, maybe. And now Swan has a third and five. It's going to be a run play. They do a delayed handoff, and Smith gets a few. But you've got to imagine they would have thought to go for that. They decide to punt it back to Carolina, but they were that was the first time they had actually got into our territory now. Carroll's got a nice nine-yard run on first down. That's going to bring up a second and one. They've pretty much been able to run it at will against this Commodore's defense. Braden Davis now going to want to throw to DJ Long. He held it for a few seconds. He really had him open the entire way, but he holds it and waits until he's in stride. And now a second and three later on the same drive. Carroll's got the run. He's got some space. Can he make a man miss? He had to beat one guy, but he went back inside. And now that is another 18-yard run. 10 for 78 by Lavacia Carroll. You've got to imagine if they score here, this game is going to be blown wide open. Braden Davis, second and 10. Fires to Sampson, who's hit hard, but he catches it. And he lays down after 17 now. First and goal, Davis, read option, keeps it himself, wide open edge, touchdown, Braden Davis, four-yard run, as he has been so, so good for this offensive unit since he took over as the starter. Last year, he really struggled to find his role, but this year, since he became the starter, he has been so good for us. Patrick Smith trying to get this Commodore's offense going before halftime, remember, Carolina gets the ball first in the second half, so they do not want to give us a chance to score another touchdown here. This time, Smith on the run. Questionable call. The Gamecocks are going to use their last timeout of the half, but they have a minute and 24 seconds left starting on a first and 10 around the 45 or the 35-yard line. Scott Hall's got the catch. He's got some space to run, barreling over some people, 19 yards off the catch and run. A lot of that came after the catch, second and 10 now. Braden Davis wants to take it, wants to go deep downfield, got his man Robinson, can he get there? No, Brandon Robinson drops a touchdown, and instead it's a third and ten now with a minute remaining. Davis is going to take the snap, he wants to throw, he's going to fire to the outside, and Robinson does make this one. He makes the tough catch in traffic but he drops the easy touchdown earlier now landon sampson on the out route he's got the first and goal now setting the gamecocks up with great territory Braden davis looking for another read option and keeps it himself the block on the edge is there he's got a touchdown on the ground again his second of the day this one from seven yards out and the run game today has been all over this commodore's defense swan on a second and 12 is brought down and they're going to let this one click down to halftime. Nick Barrett brings them down. And Carolina, the 12th-ranked Gamecocks, are up 28 to nothing over the Commodores. As I mentioned, this Vanderbilt team's had a few good wins on the year, but they are not here today. It seems like they didn't really bring their A game. They've got to get back out there in the second half and regroup if they want a chance to come back. Wouldn't be the first time a 28-point comeback has happened, but Carolina starts with the ball, so it's going to be even more difficult for Vanderbilt with eight minutes remaining. First play of the second half, Braden Davis fires outside to Carroll. Can he get the edge? Spins off of the first tackler, but he's quickly wrestled down. It's going to be about a four-yard gain, second and six now after that pass on first down. It's going to go to Carroll on the run. He's got the edge. Carroll running to the outside, stretching the edge, and he's got a first down, eight yards. He just barely got around that left side. And now a first and 10. Davis 
Play action. He's going to look around, dump it to Ryan Clayton in the outside. He's got a nice run. Cuts it back and gets the edge block. Ryan Clayton, the true freshman. No one in there to stop him. And it's a 62-yard touchdown catch and run from the freshman running back. He was a four-star athlete and prospect and a nice job. Makes the first defenders miss. And after that, there was nobody else past them. And that is a quick strike for Carolina. Now 35-0. A.J. Swan's going to take the snap. Fires into coverage, but he gets it through. Hutch Baird, what a name. 12 yards through the air there. Vanderbilt does not have time to play around. They need to get a quick strike here. Vanderbilt now snapping it. Swan's going to look to throw again under pressure. He's got Baird again. But this one is actually going to be dropped. So now a third and 10. Swan all alone, a five-out set. It looks to be a wide receiver screen. Quickly rustled down. Cole Robinson, I believe, was the first one there. He broke the sack. And TJ Sanders comes up to clean up the mess. Rory Patrick was there as well. And the Gamecocks pretty much put up in their backups now. Up 35-0. Ryan Clayton, he just had the big catch and run barreling down. He's got a nice catch or run there on first down. Setting up a third and five. Julius Kinnear is going to take it. Fire to DJ Long. The senior quarterback finally gets another opportunity to throw it. 37 yards later, they've got a first and 10, but they're going to get down to a third and eight for the Gamecocks. Kinnear running the clock down. They're going to go to Hammond. Hammond had sat down on the screen, and instead they're going to set up a fourth and nine with a long field goal. It is up, and it is no good. Off the middle upright in a studio update is going to show us that number three Baylor, 8-0. They're currently losing to BYU 17-14. to We'll have to see how that one finishes out. AJ Swan on the next possession is going to go to Gamirion Carter. He's got 11 yards through the air that time. Third and eight now. Vanderbilt needs a first down here. The backups for the Gamecocks in on defense as well. Swan's going to look to throw steps up. He sacked and fumbles it. Andy Talley picks it up, and that's a turnover for Carolina, forcing it. And now they've got a first and 10 inside Commodore territory. Julius Canary rolling out of the pocket, running. He's got some space, looking for the end zone now, diving. He fumbles it, and it's picked up by Chris Dobzinski. They're going to call it a touchdown, and what a turn of events. Julius Canary, the backup, has a lot of space to run at that time. He dives. The ball gets knocked out, and it's picked up in the end zone by Chris Dobzinski, one of our receivers, and that is a touchdown for Carolina. Now A.J. Swan's going to go to the outside. He's got his man Warren. That's Jermaine Warren. He's got 20 yards, and that is a first down for the Commodores. Now first and five after a false start for the Gamecocks, and he is brought down. Looked like he was mostly sacked by his own lineman, but Jamal Wilson's going to be the one there to bring down the quarterback, and now a third and 16 A.J. Swan rolling out a bootleg, looking to throw under pressure deep down. Field, and it should have been picked off. Emery Floyd in coverage. And now they give the ball back to Carolina. This clock is just trying to just click down. Brandon Hammond gets the pitch after a huge hit on Julius Canary, but he's got a first down 15-yard run now. Third and three now. The clock is ticking down. You've only got about one second difference now. Kaneri's going to go outside. The pass is not accurate at all. He was going for the fourth string running back. But instead, they're going to give it back to the Commodores on a 7.43 mark now. Jamirion Carter. This time, he's got a catch and a first down again for Vandy. He has been so good for them today. But it hasn't really mattered. He's been the only receiver really to step up. A.J. Swan now looking. This time Carter again gets a foot down and a nine-yard catch and another first down. They're trying to drive. Vanderbilt looking to score. A.J. Swan looks to throw. This time wrapped up and slung down. Bringing him to the turf. A.J. Swan another loss of six. Second and 16. Now Swan's going to fire into coverage. Smith. Actually gets past the defenders. It was a, a risky throw, but they're going to get the first down if they can get four yards here. Third and four. Swan's going to run the play action deep down. Field, he has his man, but he drops it. That was Waller. 
And now they have a fourth and nine after a false start. Swan going to run the screen. Nowhere to go. Jamal Wilson there to bring him down. And a turnover on downs for Vanderbilt. Carolina brings in their third string quarterback now. Johnny King's going to fire on third down. He had his man open, but the pass was just not accurate at all. So they're going to give it back right back to the Commodores. A.J. Swan's going to fire this time. It's Warren. He's going to catch that one. He's got 18 yards on the catch and run. Jermaine Warren, three catches, 41 yards. So not too bad for him today. This offense, you've got to imagine they're going for redemption points at this point. Morris is in coverage. That one is deflected by Quan Banks. And now a fourth and eight. They're going to punt it back. Very surprising call there for the Vanderbilt Commodores. You've got to be more aggressive than that. But they have to face a third and 12, the Carolina offense. It's going to be a pass and a catch, and he drops it. Picked off by the secondary cornerback. And that is going to be a turnover today for Carolina. They hadn't had one all day long. A good throw. Dobzinski couldn't, couldn't hold on to it. And it's a turnover through the air there. And the Commodores get an opportunity, at least, to score as they have the ball inside the 40. And now a second and seven. A.J. Swan's going to look to throw, look to run quickly under pressure. Can he get back to the line of scrimmage? He does. A good job of forcing his way back, but a third and seven. They have not converted a single third down today. A.J. Swan looking for their first conversion. He's got the catch, but it's not long enough. Devon Walker, a seven-yard catch on third and seven as they now face a fourth and inches. Swan takes the snap, looks to throw, got all kinds of room to run it. He's got the first down and then some 11 yards later. It's a first and 10, now a first and goal for Vanderbilt. 2.08 remaining. Swan looks to throw, wants to go to the end zone, fires to Warren, and it's caught. Jermaine Warren, seven touchdown or seven yard touchdown. I was going to say seven touchdowns. Um, definitely not that. But. 42 to 7 is your score. We can basically just run this one out if we get a couple nice runs. Brandon Hammond got a lot of space and he gets 10 of the 11 there. And that would give us enough time to run this one all the way down. Vanderbilt doesn't even use their timeouts. No time remaining. The Gamecocks get their signature SEC win. Just kidding. They get a win in the SEC. It's always big to get one of those. But against Vanderbilt... Not the toughest opponent. They still dominate as they should. 42-7. to It's been a while since we've had a game like this where our offense was just clicking. They scored, what, the first 35 points? Or no, they scored the first 42 points. And Vanderbilt was the only team to score in that fourth quarter. Um, we were basically just going through the motions there to get out of this one healthy. Braden Davis, 13 of 20, 233 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions is the big one there. He has so, been so, so good this year. Julius Canary, 3 of 5, 45 yards. And Johnny King, um, not very good in his limited time. LaVacia Carroll could have had so much more, but we took him out just to ensure his health. Braden Davis had two touchdowns on the ground, though. That's an impressive stat for him as a uh, mobile quarterback that doesn't necessarily use his legs a whole lot. Ryan Clayton, I mean, what a play there in, to open the second half. That one catch. 62 yards and a touchdown. DJ Long had four for 86. And also Scott Hall, two for 45 and a touchdown. Really, the stats aren't going to be crazy this game. They didn't have to do a whole lot, if we're being honest. The offense had a couple big plays, like that 62-yard touchdown. Um, Scott Hall had that one touchdown that was, what, like 22 yards, something like that. Donovan Westmoreland led the team with eight tackles and a sack, two for loss. Andy Talley, the freshman, a five-star defensive end. He had one sack in his limited play. Nick Barrett had a sack. Stone Blanton had a sack. Bill Benson, um, a receiver, was getting some reps on the defensive side of the ball. He had a sack as well. Um, he's kind of a guy that's an athlete, so we're looking to get him around on the field. Wilson had a sack. TJ Sanders had a sack. Sander, Jay Sanders. We have multiple Sanders, I guess. Um, and Marcus Clark missed his only field goal of the day. It was a, It was on target, but... He just didn't have enough power behind it. As you can see, um, we should be moving up. Every week we've won the last few weeks, we keep moving backwards. Last week we beat Missouri, who was ranked, and we dropped a spot. So I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but um, <clears throat> maybe we can get into the top 10 this week. Unfortunately for us, 
there's just a whole lot of undefeated teams. I mean, you look at Middle Tennessee State, they're number 19, they're 7-0, and but you look at the top 10 teams, they are pretty much all undefeated. They are all undefeated, 8-0 or 7-0. and um, Baylor, we'll see what happens to them next episode. They were in trouble of getting upset by BYU, but as far as recruiting goes, not much news. Um, as you can see, we've got some new prospects because we had the guys commit last episode, so we've got a lot of depth now. Eric Fontenot is a guy I'm excited about, um, but next episode... We are going to hope to continue our win streak to five as we take on number 24, Florida. It should be um, back at home, I believe. So we're going to be taking on the Gators in williams Bryce Stadium. They are a good team. They are four and three. Um, they've just run down some unlucky calls, some unlucky games. They lost to Texas A&M, lost to Oklahoma, and got upset by Vanderbilt. So can't write this team off, but if they get upset by App State, they will probably be unranked, but we'll have to see what happens with them going into that matchup in a week or so as always i hope you guys do enjoy this episode did enjoy this series so far if you did hit the like button subscribe turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload thank you all for the patience thank you all for watching and i'll catch you all next episode